quick announcement. I'm going to be meeting with one of my friends who went to a coding boot camp soon, and we're just going to chat and make a video and answer some questions. So if you have any questions for someone who went to a coding boot camp, let me know below and we can answer some of those. All right, let's get into the meat of this video, and we're going to be going over my first Flutter app that I created. So I'm going to show you what I built and then dive into a little bit of the code and some of my thoughts on uh, how it was to create my first app. So this app right here, as you can see, I am calling Pain Points. So what this is, is this is something that I made for my brother. He thinks he might have carpal tundra slash he's experiencing some nerve pain in his head hands, arms, slash elbow. So if you want to track uh, the severity and where it's happening and like uh, when it's happening. So I made it an app to help kind of like track and put where all the pain points are. Uh, so how it works is you can choose from either low, medium, or high uh, pain level. Uh, and then you pick whether it's on your left or right side. And then as I toggle between this, you'll see the picture changes. You can also toggle between the three different places where you may be experiencing pain. And then you can just go ahead and you can click on the image itself. Um, and then you can choose where it is. So you can see I have this little icon here. And then I click save point uh, and it turns yellow for medium. It'll turn red for high. So we can place another point, save it, and then low is green. So we can save all these points and then it also saves the date underneath the hood to keep track of it. Um, and then I'm also here are the coordinate points for uh, where, where it's placed on the hand. Um, so yeah, so it's a real simple app, good starter one that I was trying out a few things in Flutter. Um, so let's kind of, I'm going to kind of go how I built some of the pieces of this now. To start off with, I thought we'd just go over a few dependencies that I used. I always find it interesting to see what packages someone uses when they build a project. So I used, uh, I added at least three from the default that you get from just creating a Flutter package. So the first one is this SQLite thing. This was how I'm using to store the data or persist the data. So when you reopen the app, all these points persist and you see them. Um, I'm using SQLite to store that. So I'm using this package and uh, that's where all the data is being stored. Now I used some tutorial to show me how to do SQLite and they were use this path provider. So I actually don't even know what path provider does but just came to get to work with SQLite. I installed this. Uh, I think maybe to check whether the database file exists or something. And then the last package that I added is called RxDart. So I use this for some streams, basically some reactive programming. Um, in my application. Uh, basically, one part of this application, uh, the fetching from the SQLite database and feeding that data into the components, I'm using RxDart for, I'm using the block pattern for that. All right, so we can look at my main component here. So this is what it looks like. Oh man, I forgot to get rid of my title. Oh well. Um, and uh, I guess we just have an app bar there. This is the main piece of the body. So it's using a stream builder. So this allows us to get access to a stream of panes. And so when a new pane is added right there, um, it's going to update the UI accordingly. So how stream builder works in a Dart or I guess Flutter is we have this snapshot thing we have access to inside this builder function. Um, in this snapshot, we can say snapshot.data, and we can get the list of items. I think I'm using it down here. So basically, I'm just sifting through the data. And a uh, funny thing about Dart is they use dot .where instead of dot .filter. So this is the same thing as filtering through the list, and it returns an iterable, which is kind of interesting. So it's lazily um, creating the list, or I guess trimming the list, and then I turn it into an irregular list here. Uh, but yeah, that's just when I click this, you see different points depending on where you are. So that's how I'm filtering it. Uh, one thing you'll notice is I'm storing all this stuff in enums. So for like the pain level, I said low, medium, high. For the pain sides, either left or right. Pain location, hand, wrist, or elbow. Um, and so I wanted to be able to basically get the the value of the enum like I wanted to know that low was the string low and I wanted to print that string 
So I did this one hack here. I don't know if there's like a better way to do it, but if you say pain dot side dot two string, it'll it'll what it'll do is it'll say pain side dot low as a string. And so what I would do is I would split it by the period and then I would get the element, the low part. So that way it would actually render low. So this would spit out low. So whenever I wanted to basically turn an enum into a string, I would say dot two string, split it, and then do that. I have no idea if there's a better method to do this because um, there's a few places I'm doing it and it kind of looks kind of spaghetti. But uh, part of this code is pretty spaghetti, but this is my first Flutter application, so it makes sense. So I'm storing stuff like the pain level, pain location, pain side, all these like buttons up here, and uh, basically... I guess you could just say a field level or a property of this widget. And then in Flutter, what you do is you call set state. Um, and then you say inside this set state function, uh, whatever thing you want to mutate or change. So in this case, like I'm saying the value of the pain level. Um, and then I'm doing the set state, uh, which re-renders everything when I click on this. Also, something interesting with enums is I say dot values on them. Uh, so dot values will give me just an array of the enum values. So that's a mapping over the enum values to display it here. And then you'll see me grabbing the string of it right there. Um, other than that, I think the the interesting bit was in my actual, is in another component. I think it's in my, not my pain model. I think it's in view pain. Yeah, so this view pain um, widget, yeah, there it is, is this bit here. So there is a, or is it gesture detector inside of Flutter, which allows me to listen for on tap. And when I click on tap, you'll notice I'm basically just calling an on tap function that it gets passed down. Uh, but I'm doing this thing right here. What that does, that nonsense just gives me an X and Y coordinate point. So if you look at what this returns, it returns an offset and offset just gives you an X and Y which I can then render, right? So as I'm clicking, I'm just recording that. Um, and then I'm rendering a stack. The first thing in this stack is an image, which is the hand or the wrist or whatever. Uh, and then after that, I'm looping through all the panes, which I get from, I'm passing as a prop down. Um, and I just position them based on the value, the X and the Y that I have when I created the point. So basically when I hit save point, I save the X and the Y, and then I go through them and list all the X, Ys and render all these in a stack. Now, funny enough, you're probably wondering why the heck I have a child care icon here. Um, I couldn't find just a circle when I was searching for this. There wasn't any like just flat out circles. Everything had like something inside of it. So I was like, all right, whatever. I'll just pick this one. It kind of looks kind of cool. Um, with the little faces on it. So that's why I had, there's child care guys just like floating around there. Um, but they're all stacked on top of each other. Um, or at least they're all using the stack component. So if I like put one here, I actually don't know what it looks like when a, they're multiple stacked. Okay, so the yellow is on top of the green because they're stacked like that. So if I change the position of the stack, like if I were to reverse the widgets, um, I don't know if there's like a dot reverse on this. Maybe like two list and then two reverse. Yeah, I have no idea if you can reverse a list in Dart or how what the syntax is, so I'm not going to try. But uh, yeah, so recording the location of a person clicking is done with gesture detector and then stacking everything is using a stack and then positioning it absolutely with this positioned and the child is an icon. So that's pretty much the gist of this application. Other than that, it's just a bunch of buttons that I'm storing in a local state here, um, the values of these things, and I'm updating them as you click on stuff. Um, and then the other thing, I think I don't think I uh, mentioned the SQLite part yet. So that's in the pain model over here. It has all this junk. Uh, I had to like write how to go from JSON to a object. So that's what this junk does here and how to go from an object to JSON. So to parse it back and forth. Um, so that's what this whole pain model class does. 
Um, this pain block is the storage area or the, uh, I guess, I don't even know what to con I would consider this thing. But what it does is this is where I'm using RX Start and I'm using the behavior subject that comes from RX Start. And this allows me to do reactive programming. I'm creating a stream. And uh, this is where I'm calling, I create this DB provider thing, which can get all the panes from the SQLite database. Um, and then after that, I am uh, basically returning that to the stream. So if you're listening to the stream, you're getting all the, the points or the pain points. Uh, if we click on the provider, we can go look at that. This is another thing I created. So you can see here, I'm creating the database. And I think this is where I'm using that path library that I installed probably somewhere yeah maybe it's this thing maybe I'm not using the path library no here's the path provider I am using it anyway this is what the uh, creating of things in SQLite looks like so I'm calling db.insert and I'm basically taking an object a paint object and I'm saying to JSON on it I wrote a raw delete statement um, so yeah that's all that jazz um, you'll notice, I don't know, in general, when I was actually coding this, it felt a, kind of gave me some flashbacks to coding Java-esque slash doing Android development. Feels a little boilerplate-ish, not going to lie. Um, it feels better than coding straight Java, I'd say. But in general, when I've been, when I code this application up, maybe I'm also really new to Dart and flutter so i probably could have coded all this in a different manner that's more elegant too um, but so far just everything feels a tiny bit bloated slash boilerplate ish which i'm not a huge fan of it doesn't feel too bad i'm not hating it yet um, but that was one thing i noticed the enum thing was another thing i noticed i didn't know if there's a better way to do that uh, and then another thing i noticed was i'm still not getting used to all these nested functions I really noticed it in situations like if I wanted to insert a column or something is like, all right, so let's say I want to um, ins wrap this column inside of a column. So like I want to say, or maybe make it into a container. I'll say container, then I'll say child. And I have to go down and try to figure out where the end of this column is. And it's kind of a nightmare with all these nested uh, functions. Now it's it's helpful that they have like these slash slashes where you can see where the end of things are. This is something the Flutter extension adds so you can kind of figure out and Vim is a lifesaver because I can jump between like parentheses here so I can know alright I need to add a parentheses right here I think and save it um, but that was one thing where I just need to sometimes you know just add a value in or add a widget around it it's kind of awkward I'm just like wrapping the entire thing compared to JSX where I'd be able to go to the top and add it go to the bottom and add it just a little bit more easier that was one thing I noticed when just adding things uh, the other thing is I, I, I wanted to go enter into the contest for flutter and they said you need to have five kilobytes or less code to do so and the way they're measuring it is by running this command. So find dot all the Dart files in your project and then counting, I guess, the characters. So the initial version of this project has 12 kilobytes of code. So I somehow need to half this um, if I want to get it down and submit it to the contest. And I haven't even made it pretty yet. So I have no idea how I'm going to create anything for the Flutter contest under 5 kilobytes. It feels hecka restrictive. Um, especially with, I don't even know how, like, if I just look at my main file, maybe. Let's see how much that is. I wonder if that is under 5 kilobytes. Okay, that's just above 5 kilobytes. So I think I have... So I guess I can play with what's on the home page and see if I can minimize everything else. Um, so for the Flutter contest, you have to create something pretty basic to be able to do it. But at the same time, at least the instructions, they want something pretty and creative and stuff. I have no idea how I'm going to go about doing that. So I'm not sure if I'm still going to enter into the contest. We'll see if I can get this into a smaller thing. Uh, but overall, 
I did enjoy creating the app in Flutter. It was pretty nice. Um, those were just a few points that I mentioned that I felt a little weird while making it. Other than that, it felt really nice. Um, things like look decent with like basically zero effort into design. I'm not going to say this looks good by any stretch, um, but at least I have like some decent looking buttons out of the box. And uh, this this part I was able to create pretty easily. The I was surprised how easy the gesture uh, one was. Using gesture detector was very easy to get working. That was nice. I'm still not used to the block provider. This is, I have no idea uh, how this all this jazz works. This is still a, a black box to me. But being able to basically access this block class in multiple places, I made, I made that provider thing. That's this block provider thing here. Allows me to access the pain block anywhere. That was a little weird. Uh, but I do like I do like Flutter, and I enjoy doing stuff with it. And I could see myself like doing more Flutter stuff. And I may be doing some Flutter tutorials on some of the stuff that I learned doing this. So if you're interested, let me know. Whether it's SQLite, whether it's Block, uh, I can probably go through some of that stuff now. I have a better grasp on how it all works. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna put this code on GitHub if you want to check it out and use it as an example. You're welcome to. Um, yeah.